Hi all, welcome to another Studio 180 Design educational video tutorial. We are here today to talk to you about uh, one of our tools and the pineapple block. The pineapple block is a traditional bucket list project that uh, many people would like to make. Traditionally, when you see it being made, it's made with paper foundation piecing. Eh, you know what? I'm glad I know paper foundation piecing, but if I don't have to use it, I'd prefer not. What we discovered with the release of our new large square squared tool and a very lively discussion at one of our certified instructor retreats was that the new tool, the large square squared, had many of the lines that were needed to be able to make the pineapple block and make it oversized with the construction and trimming it down as you go. So we thought we'd put this together. We did. We wrote a pattern for the quilt that's behind us. It's called Peach Melba, but I thought I'd do a video along with it to make every all the steps a little bit clearer. The large square square is actually a two-part tool, part A and part B, and it was designed to create the traditional square inside of a square unit. And like all my tools, it allowed me to make the unit, it allows me to make the unit a little bigger than it needs to be and trim it down. For those of you who aren't familiar with the tool, it's self-contained. What it has is it has a section on part A that you would use, it's a window template, series of window templates that you use to cut the center square of precision size. It has a chart also on part A for the size squares that you would use to cut in half and produce oversized surrounding side triangles. And then part B has a series of X's on it that once you build your unit oversized, you can place these X's onto the seam intersections that you've sewn and accurately trim these to precision units with straight of grain edges and seams being exactly a quarter of an inch from the edge so you get to keep all the points. Now, Again, we're going to talk about building the pineapple block. And because I was doing a block that required a couple of other guidelines in the process, what I'm going to talk to you first about, and all the instructions for doing this, are instructions for adding some additional marks to part B. Part B is the part that has those X's on it. What I found is most of the lines on here are pretty good, but there were some additional lines that I wanted to add. And I'm gonna point those out to you. They're shown right in the pattern that we've written. The first line that I add is a diagonal. Oh, let me back up. Let me talk a little bit about those lines. I never actually mark the back of my tool. What I do is I cover the back of my tool with Invisigrip. Invisigrip is a clear static clean plastic that adheres to the back of your tool. Cover the entire tool with the Invisigrip first. And then to mark the lines, my favorite tool for marking is the Sharpie permanent fine line marker. It's going to mark, stay on there, and never rub off on my fabric. But the, let me go back now to talking about the lines that I actually mark. I'm connecting some of those X's that I talked about earlier on this part B. And I'm making vertical lines, and I'm making horizontal lines. And I'm making vertical and horizontal lines through the X's, through the X's of the six, here and here, here and here, through the eights, through the tens, here to here, here to here, and through the X's of the 12, here to here, here to here. And the last two lines that you need are lines that are drawn at one and a quarter inches from this far edge here. They're actually a quarter of an inch in from the 11 and a half inch permanent lines. And remember, all these lines are drawn on the reverse side of the tool on that Invisigrip. So when you're done with the project, you can take all those lines off and not be dealing with them anymore. Now there's one other thing. This is an option that I found, having made a good number of these blocks, that line that's one and a quarter inches from the edge gets used over and over and over in the later parts of the process. And I discovered that if I took tape, and I took the tape, stacked it up, eh, three, four, five, six layers deep, and then cut it down the middle, I would have a nice straight edge. And instead of just using a line right there, what I found that I like to do is take that stack of tape and place that stack of tape 
right up against the 11 and a quarter inch line. I'll do it this way and then I'll do it this way and it's going to give me a ridge that comes into play with the trim down process later there. So let me get that done and I'll come right back to you with what we're going to do first to start building our pineapple blocks. Back again and what you can see on the ruler is that I put the edge of the tape right at that drawn one and a quarter inch line. And again, that tape is four or five layers deep, so it gives me a nice edge for bumping up against sewn seams. Now let's get started with our pineapple block. As you can see in the block behind me, each of the pineapple blocks starts with a four patch in the middle. So that's where you'll need to start in the instructions. You'll start with strips, sew strips together, take piece strips, layer them one on top of each other, slice them apart. All of these are one and three quarter inch strips and one and three quarter inch slices to allow you so that when you stitch, you're gonna end up with a four patch unit. I make these units bigger than they need to be on purpose so that I can then take a regular ruler, trim this down to a very precision size. The instructions in the pattern talk to you about how to trim that down. You see that there's not very much waste there, but I'm going to start with my center square exactly the right size. Once I have my four patch constructed and trimmed, the next step in the process is to surround those four patches with oversized triangles. Again, the dimensions are listed in the pattern. You'll put two triangles on just like we do for our traditional You'll put two triangles on this way, press them, put two triangles on this way, and press them, and then we're going to trim this down to size. What you're going to look at and take note of is in the pattern is that we're going to use both the part A and the part B for the trim down. And for this one, I'm going to use part A to do the trimming. Part A is the section that has those window templates on it. And what I'll do is use the part A, line up for a four inch finished unit. I've trimmed one side, but I'm looking at the registration marks here. The halfway registration marks here, 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 and here. Remember, I've already trimmed one of these corners, so I also have lines here that line up. But this is how you would do the trimming. Trim off the two sides, rotate it around, trim the other two sides. I now have round one of my pineapple with a four patch, and four surrounding triangles. I'm going to go on to round two. Let me get set up and I'll talk to you about the next step. As you work your way through the pineapple pattern, you're going to have all the sizes for all the triangles. But remember, all the triangles and all the strips that you add around that four patch section. Um, but remember, they're always going to be a little bigger and we're going to place them and then trim them down. So we're placing two oversized blue triangles on, stitching them, pressing them out, placing two more oversized, in this case, green triangles on there, stitching and pressing those out. One thing that I'm going to suggest is that you always stitch with the center section, the square section on top, so that you can see the points of those triangles that you're adding on the back and you can get your best look at the, at the piece that you've already trimmed. When you're done with the trimming, you'll see that it's oversized. We trimmed the first round, the four patch, and the surrounding triangles with part A. For this one, I'm going to pull up part B. Part B has the markings that have the X's on it. I'm making a four inch unit here and the, and the pattern tells you what lines you're going to look at, but I'm going to look at the X's by the number four. Here, 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 and here. Those four X's line up at the four seam intersections. Trim up and trim across so that again, I'm going to have a precision center to build outward into my pineapple block. Very little waste on that. Look again at the X's for the four here, 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 and here. And what you're also going to see is some other things happen. This center diagonal happens to go right through that center four patch. Isn't that nice? That's one of the reasons that it's on there. It'll come into play again down the road. So I've got the finished part of round two. I've got the four patch surrounded by triangles and trimmed, surrounded by colored triangles and trimmed as well. We're going to go on to adding the next round of triangles. Let me get those ready. Be right back. So we've 
created our four patches, trimmed those with a regular ruler, added round one of triangles, trimmed them with part A, added our second round of triangles, trimmed them with part B. That's what you see in the center of this one. From this point going forward, you're going to be adding strips instead of triangles around that center section. So with the, the sewing on this one, you can see that uh, the section that was already trimmed, I'm adding strips, oversized, two strips, pressing out, stitching these two strips, and pressing out. And then following the instructions, you're going to see that you come back to part A for your trimming. To do that trimming, you'll set this on point like this, use part A, and what we're looking at for the part A are the center square for an eight inch block. And when you're doing this, you're again looking at the registration marks, those halfway registration marks that are on the ruler, find the eight inch finished, the halfway registration mark right there. Follow it around. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. And when you have those lined up properly, you'll see that the diagonal of this one, that's a permanent diagonal that's always on the tool, will line up with the four patch. And you're again going to trim on all four sides. I'm going to trim up the right and across the top. Remember, this is right-handed trimming to trim those away. If I were doing left-handed, I'd be trimming up, or up the left and across the top and simply having my shape rotated like this so I can do the trimming in this direction. But after I've trimmed up and across, I'm going to pick up the ruler, rotate the block 180 degrees. That, tri that four patch in the middle is now still set on point. Look at the same lines those registration marks for the eight inch finished, those halfway registration marks. I always look at the bottom one first, then I look here, I look here, here, and here. Centers the ruler with that center diagonal going right on that four patch. I'm getting refined alignment of my tool on my unit. Trim and trim. Looks a little funny right now, but you're on your way to making those precision pineapple blocks. We're now going to add strips that follow in a color sequence. So you notice how the green is coming out in one direction. We're going to continue that. When you add the green strips, they're going to be added to the same size as the green. And when you add the blue strips, they're going to be added in this direction. Always remember, do that sewing with the pieced unit on top so you can keep an eye on the crossed seams that are already sewn and stitching right through those are going to keep you keep all your points on your projects when you're done. So you're adding. You're adding blue logs. You're adding green logs. You're going to trim those as well before you add the next round. And for trimming, we're going to do part B again. We're going to A to B to A. Now we're back to B. I'm looking at those first set of drawn lines. The first set of drawn lines that I did were from the X's, connecting the X's at the six here to here and here to here. Those guidelines are going to line directly up with the sewn lines of your center four patch. You're also going to see that that diagonal that we drew on the back of our tool will hit those points of those triangles, allowing you to get a nice square cut. And I'll cut here, cut here, rotate 180 degrees, and cut the other two sides as well. Now again, right-handed, you're in the upper right. Left-handed, you'd be doing all of these steps with the tool rotated. I'll do a quick demonstration of the left-handed. Rotate the unit, that the sewn unit, rotate your ruler so that you can line up the same guidelines here and here, the six inch drawn guidelines with your four patch so you can trim this way. Let me go ahead and trim that and I'll come back with what we're gonna do next. Here you see what we've just done. We've trimmed that center section down and we're going to now add the next round of strips. What we'll do for the next round of strips is actually add yellow strips, the background strips. So you'll alternate back and forth. You'll always be adding a round of colored strips and a round of yellow strips. I'll stitch them and press them out. Stitch them as always with the pieced section on top. And I'm going to trim this now with part B again. 
If you haven't figured it out by now, this is a pretty challenging project. So you're going to want to pay very close attention to the directions that are in the pattern. They're illustrated and they, they will walk you step by step through. But at, from this point forward, the only part of the tool that I'm going to use is part B. And I'm going to turn and use the reverse side of part B. This is where that taped edge is going to come into play. Those taped edges are going to go against the seam lines on that green and blue triangle. And the taped edges create a nice little ridge. I can place those right up against the seam lines, bump them up there. And what I'm also going to see is that the center diagonal is falling through the center of the P section, right through the center of that four patch. There aren't any other lines that I'm looking at. Just the edge here, the edge here, and the diagonal here. And I'm going to trim the two sides, rotate the unit 180 degrees, and trim again. Let me do that. I'll be right back. So we've trimmed the section with the last round of yellow strips. Again, we're going to continue to add colored strips. We'll be adding green strips to the green sides and blue strips to the blue sides. We're going to stitch those strips into place, creating a unit that looks like this. And we're ready to trim this one down with part B in the regular format. I'll be setting the block up so that that four patch in the middle is set square, just like you would see a normal four patch. The, the colors are going off on the diagonal now. You're starting to see what's happening with this. I'll use part B again. I'm going to be looking at those crosshairs that I drew between the eights. The crosshair that I drew on the back of my ruler, the guideline, from eight to eight, and from eight to eight horizontally, they will line up right with that four patch center. And there'll be some other lines that will also line up. You're gonna use the other lines to help make sure that everything stays nice and square. The diagonal should come pretty close to lining up with those points of the triangles. The, you have other guidelines on here. Sometimes they'll line up perfectly, sometimes they'll run parallel to what you're doing. The only guidelines that you really wanna make sure are Square and straight are the eight inch connecting ones, the center diagonal going this way, and just keep an eye on some of those other permanent guidelines and do the next round of trimming. Let me do that, I'll be right back. This is what you should have at this point, the trimmed edges of the recently added colored strips. I'm going to remove those, add additional yellow strips here and here to create the unit that looks like this. And once those strips are sewn and pressed, do the next round of trimming. I'm going to set that center four patch on point again. That is going to set that up for the, the reverse side, the tape side of part B for the trimming. So the tape side, those taped edges, are going to go up against those blue and green, the colored sewn seams, they're there. Line up the diagonal right through the center. Again, use any of the printed lines on the ruler to help keep things nice and square and straight. Trim two sides, rotate it 180 degrees, and trim the other two sides. When you're done with this round of trimming, this is the shape you end up with. It's now time to add the colored strips again. You'll add the blue to the blue edge. You'll add the green to the green edge to end up with a shape that looks like this. This shape, you will now be setting the center four patch square and using part B with the regular alignment of the ruler. And you're gonna be looking at the 10 inch drawn crosshairs. Those drawn lines that you used connecting the X's of the 10 will go right through the center of that four patch. Keep an eye on this diagonal. That's going to help keep everything nice and square going right through those points. And use any of the other lines that are on the ruler to help keep the blocks nice and square and not shifted or skewed and ending up with misshapen blocks. So you've added the strips, you've pressed them out, you've lined up the 10, You've lined up the diagonal, 
and you're ready to trim this round of added strips. We're almost there, gang. We have one more round of yellow strips that we add to the center section. Once they're stitched and pressed for this round, this final round of yellow strips, what I'm going to do is rotate the block so that that center four patch is on point and use the taped section of the ruler for this final trim of the of the strips edges against the seams diagonal following through your four patch guidelines helping you square it up do that final trim and you have just one more addition and one more trim and you're going to end up with a perfect block we're here we're at the end our final step is is in sight we're going to add our oversized corner triangles. The green triangles will go along the green section and the blue triangles will go along the blue section. And we're going to use part B of the trim of the large square squared for our final trim down. The guidelines that we'll be looking at are those guidelines that connect the X's for the 12. We're making a 12 inch finish block and we've drawn those guidelines at the 12. Those drawn guidelines are the crosshairs that are going to be placed right in the middle of the four patch unit. You're looking again at that long diagonal. Keep an eye on all those other guidelines so that you're getting it nice and square. And once you get things lined up and you're happy with your placement, you are ready to trim this on two sides, rotate the block around and trim on the other two sides. And you are going to end up with an absolutely perfect 12 and a half inch pineapple block, which makes the construction of a quilt like this, super, super, super simple. There's nothing nicer than putting 12 and a half inch blocks together. They all meet, they all match. So pick up the large square square tool at your local quilt shop. Pick up a copy of our Peach Melba pattern. And if your quilt shop doesn't have it, come visit us at our website. We'll get it in your hands faster than fast and you'll be making, you'll be getting your pineapple block off your bucket list without having to sit there and without all that paper like we've done in the past. Good luck with all your projects. Hope to see you around.